here's to Florida at the very last minute, like pulling it through and making it happen. So um, uh, my name is Maya Israel. I'm here with Ken Kathleen Schofield and we're, um, I will kind of just so that you all know what happened because this is very quick. Um, last Thursday, as in less than a week ago, we were contacted by um, CS's Elementary and say that there's this wonderful initiative and why isn't Florida involved? And so um, I immediately contacted Kathleen and um, other folks here who are in the room to say, we have a lot of amazing things happening in Florida around elementary computer science. And so we invited all of you, um, we asked for resources and many of you have shared those with us. Um, we have less than a, a half hour together, but one of the things I, did is I created a Google form if folks want to stay connected. I think there's so much energy around elementary computer science in the state. And so here, I'll just share my screen. And um, there we go. I did practice this. All right. So yes, you did. I did. <laughs> All right. So what we thought we would do today, and this is just a very quick amount of time together, is um, we would just do a quick introduction. Um, we wanted to talk just very, very quickly about why we're talking about computer science at the elementary level, but we're kind of preaching to the choir, so we really don't need to spend a lot of time doing that here. Um, and then we thought we would have some share outs. So um, we have some volunteers from uh, Broward. Um, we've got um, Kathleen. I'll share a little bit about what we're doing here at UF. And then you'll see that there is a link. And Kathleen, do you mind putting the link in the chat to this? Otherwise, I'll do it. We I created um, sure. a sign up for for you to put your information in here. Your um, hopefully I put something about email. If there's no, I, we had to do this so quickly. So if it just says name and it doesn't leave a spot for email, just please put your email next to your name. And then we've started to gather some resources. You all have sent us resources and materials, and so we've um, compiled some of them. But we still have a little bit of work to do. Um, so kind of why, why is um, Infosys and CS as elementary and CS for all and code.org and all of us, um, why are you we talking about CS at the elementary level? And a, a few of the bullets that we had talked about is that um, we want to start to build interest in computer science as students are forming their academic identities, right? So while they're still thinking, I can be a computer scientist, this is a great time to do it. We know that as kids transition from elementary to middle school, those become a little bit more um, kind of station, like they've already developed those identities. And so we wanna introduce these positive and co um, consistent experiences. Um, all of us who've been doing this work can see what an amazing creative outlet this is for students who problem solve. Uh, it reintroduces the idea of productive persistence, productive failure, learning from challenge in a really fun way for kids. Um, and also it's a wonderful opportunity for students to collaborate with each other. So that's just a few of the things out here. We wanted some of you who are doing this work to share some advice um, and to share and highlight some of the things you're doing. And so what I'd like to do is stop sharing my screen and I know um, Lisa and Anne Margaret are here to start off with. I'd love for them to share. And then afterwards, I'd love for um, Rebecca to also share as well. And Rebecca, if you want me to share my screen, I can do so as well. So let's see if Lisa and Anne Margaret are here. Uh, I saw them. <laughs> Hi. Uh, There's Anne Margaret. <laughs> I'm in my car, sorry, I had to pull over so that I can uh, be a part of this. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Hi, everyone. So, and Margaret, what I was hoping you and Lisa could do is just talk about what kind of the general landscape of what's happening in Broward around elementary computer science education. And this is also being recorded. So as people are going to watch this who are new to computer science at the elementary level, what are some things that you might suggest that they do? Well, it's going to, it, you know, after so many years of doing it, it just sounds like the simple first step is code.org for us. This is where we started. Uh, we created a plan. Uh, Lisa was really the, the impetus, the, the queen of all things CS, and, and 
decided that what we really needed was a pathway of CS from K through 12. Um, so we started many years ago with code.org and, and getting all the schools into it. We became regional partner with them. So offering trainings and what have you. But then as we started to grow, we realized we kind of needed to give teachers a connection in elementary to CS that was both viable and feasible. So we started talking about that their focus is computational thinking because we use those skills in everything we do in the elementary classroom. There's not a moment where we're not looking for patterns or using decomposition and abstraction or models. And so these concepts, you know, this data applies to what we're already doing in the classroom. Um, and the first time I really saw that connection when I was still in the classroom was when we were talking to our students about algorithms. It was our first year with, you know, code.org and we're talking about what's an algorithm. And one of my kids turned to me, a third grader and said, oh, we use that word in math. And I said to myself, from the mouth of babes, you know, it starts somewhere. So when you start to make connections between CS and concepts they're learning in the classroom, not only is it easier for the students, but the teachers will embrace it because they can see the validity. This idea of computational thinking is a part of PBL. It's a part of learning and dissecting problems and critical thinking and really having evidence for your thought process. So. I think that might be the first step. I don't know if Lisa's joined us yet and wants to chime in at this point, but getting them to, to start there with those foundational skills means that they develop a love for this hands-on approach to computer science, and now they want to do more with it. And we see them being much more creative, much more open to embracing technology and pushing their teachers into embracing technology. Um, when we, when we work with teachers, we often say, don't be afraid of Scratch or don't be afraid of the Sprite Lab. Just tell the kids, this is what we want to do. We're going to try Minecraft today and I need you to take the lead and then get out of the way. Let them, you be Vanna and let them teach you and let them teach each other. You'd be amazed at their knowledge and their ability. And then your job is just to be that guy, keep it tied to the content, keep it tied to the standards. So. I do want to say, um, Anne Margaret, that yes, we started with code.org. However, we have expanded, as she mentioned. We yep. also do Scratch. We do a lot of physical computing. We compute with Scratch and Makey Makey. So the lower level, we start with them with that. And what else do we do? I mean, <laughs> we've expanded this. We, we've gone to art teachers, music oh, teachers, PE that teachers. That has so. been so much fun. <laughs> When you get a bunch of PE teachers in the training with you and you say to them, we're going to show you how to bring computer science into your PE class, and they look at you the first day like, you're a crazy lady, but okay. And then by day two, they're like, all right, that's it. We're in. We want more. What else can we do? Show us more. And they really start to see how the application of computer science skills and computational thinking works in all fields. And at the end of the day, isn't that what we want our students to know? Computer science is a part of everything. It's not sitting behind a desk and it's not just hacking. So yeah, Rebecca's awesome at getting them to do the physical computing. She's our physical computing rock star with our PD. That's amazing. And so, I mean, this is the kind of thing that as we're going to collect resources, especially at the elementary level, integration is the key, right? So there are some resources that we've already put in the spreadsheet. And um, I see Joanne Barrett's on here. She helped kind of put that together. So um, that list is editable by all of us. It's for us. So we can crowdsource these materials. Um, and as I well. Drop, I, I'm sorry, I did drop those links in the chat to get both to the resource sheet and to sign up for the listserv. And Perfect. we really want to grow our Florida community and keep everybody connected and grow our group even more from here. Wonderful. And I just added the, um, the option, put your email address on the form too. So um, could, do you, um, let me see here. I'm going to share my screen again. Um, and uh, by the way, thank you, Ann Margaret. Rebecca, do you want to talk a little bit about the resources that you've created to see to give people the option to to go there um, and explore? Maya, before we switch to Rebecca, I just want to give a shout out. So when they mentioned CSTA memberships as uh, every can, 
we have two local CSTA chapters here in Florida. We have the CSTA Florida chapter. We have the uh, CSTA Broward West Palm. So that's uh, those are two different chapters. And they're looking for leadership in the Broward and West Palm. So if that's something that you're interested in for Florida, so that you can have more action uh, boots on the ground, if you will, then definitely consider joining those chapters within CSTA. And sorry for interrupting, but thank no, you. No, that's wonderful. Thank you so much for saying that. And Joanne Barrett is here too, and she's mm-hmm. active in the CSTA at Florida as well. So right. I know these are regional, and I know that the national CSTA conference, the, the meeting's going to be in Chicago this summer. It would be amazing if we had a Florida contingency, if, you know, knock on wood, I'm everything in. goes well. I'm in too. Um, to go to Chicago together and maybe have like a, a, a session for um, all of the Florida across the CSTA. So thank you, Anne Margaret, for that. That wasn't an interruption at all. All right, so I'm going to share my screen now. Oh, by the way, that's the other Rebecca. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> that's the, the other. Is Rebecca Haynes here? She is. She is. Here, I'm here. I, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. I was about to say evening. Good afternoon. Um, so what I have up here, and I'll be able to provide the link. I'll give it to Dr. Maya, who will more than likely be able to share out with you. Um, before I actually start, if possible, please drop in the chat what county you are coming from. Shout out to Broward and all those who are on, but I know there are um, other amazing Lots Florida of counties places. as well. Oh, Miami-Dade. Okay. All right, Clay County, St. John's, Alachua, actually pronounced that correctly, for Little Broward, yes. Okay, Palm Beach, Sarasota, Sumter. Okay, fantastic, Osceola, more Palm Beach. Okay, Duval, Putnam, and Seminole Diocese of Orlando Schools, St. John's. So thank you everyone so much for being here. So I'm just going to go through, as you heard from our CS leaders at the beginning, that there is a plethora of resources out there. Uh, From my perspective, I'm actually a science teacher, and when I was approached to do robotics, I had never done robotics before whatsoever, so I had to do like a lot of research. What I started off with when it comes to CS is what I felt comfortable with, and and Margaret hit the nail on the head. I had heard of computational thinking, and that's where it begins. So computational thinking is dovetail to every content area. It's about realizing that CS is about problem solving. Think about how engineers generate solutions to problems. Think about what the whole purpose of computers were. They're originally for mathematical purposes, but they've grown to something so much more. So what I'm going what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to provide you the link to this so that as I'm speaking, you can kind of click on it as well. And I'm just, uh, I'm actually broadening it a little bit more. If you think that there's a resource that I, that you think I should add, my email is right there, which is rosegstar at gmail.com. And then if it's, if it's working for you, great. Let me know if you're having any issues being able to click onto the link. Please let me know. Um, just drop that into the chat. So when you. I just clicked on the link. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking a moment. There we go. Okay, thank you, Dr. Maya. So when you move your cursor around for the CSS Elementary, all of it is hyperlinked for you. So um, if you click on something such as local, uh, it will give you an option to see things about UF. So if you're like, I'm really interested in CS and I would like to get a certification in it or maybe a degree, that's an option for you. Uh, the other thing that you will realize when it comes to CS, there are so many options. Um, a really great, really, really, really great team that I've worked with is Turk. And that's where I kind of got more of an introduction to computational thinking. They actually have a study, which is paid. They will pay you to do the study with your kids. Um, if so, if, can you click on the link for me, Dr. Meyer, for the sure. Infact? Sure, and I'm actually part of Infact. So if you have okay. questions specific to this, um, I work with Jody Aspel clark in that group. Oh. Oh. Yes, so they're amazing, I, amazing, amazing. For some reason it's not that, there, okay. but that's okay because folks okay. will have a chance to. Got you. So when you move your cursor around, you'll be able to click on um, uh, different things. Maybe you have to put it in presentation mode. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. But you're right. Um, try that. So if you move your cursor around, you'll be able to click. If something's not working, please, please, please let me know. 
It worked for me earlier. So yes. I think it does. I think it's just my connection potentially. So when it comes to, and thank you, Dr. Maya, when it comes to CS, there's many avenues that you can take. So one of the things that my students are really into is circuitry. That's is actually powering on your computer. That's powering um, any type of peripherals. And I think a great way to be able to demonstrate that is with C-Purge. Um, C-Purge is actually an underwater robot. Oh, good. It's working. It's working. So yeah, C-Purge. Um, the other one that I had mentioned was in fact. And there's information there. Dr. Maya is working with them. And, the, and what it is, is getting students who are neurodiverse. So think about the students who have the IEP, who are 504. Uh, and they get the opportunity to express their knowledge when it comes to algorithms, abstraction with this study. And they look at gameplay. So there's scratch that's involved in there. Uh, I have a little video that shows Minecraft. We have a fantastic Minecraft uh, happy hour within our district. And for those of you who may or may not use Minecraft in your classrooms, uh, they do have a uh, demo that you can play around with. And they give you how Minecraft can be integrated into every content area. So you can just click around on there. Um, on the PowerPoint that I've provided my students, they integrated Minecraft into my science classroom. So we're, we're doing two content areas together and they actually built out uh, plate boundaries. There are, there are more resources as well. When you go to like the little table, you can click on um, something that says Stampedia, code.org, cyber.org, CS for all. And Stempity is a really cool site. So if you really, really like Scratch, which is Blockly coding, and you want to expand it and focus on artificial intelligence, uh, there are different projects that you can actually use. And you just download it to your computer, and it's free. They do have options where you can pay for it, uh, like for additional products. But these are free resources to you. And uh, the last, and then the one thing that I'm going to have you do, Dr. Maya, if you put it in presentation mode and you and you uh, hit enter. Under, yes, see. there we go. So ah. you're gonna you're gonna notice that different little icons will show up. There's like a little vex spot. Um, that's a way in which we can introduce and have the students learn about engineering mm -hmm. with with a uh, vex. And it's like a little robot that appears to the left on the on the uh, yes. And if you click on the little robot, you it'll take you to like the vex site. Oh, sorry about that. There we go. Oh, no, you're fine. <laughs> and by the way, everybody calls me Maya. Nobody calls me doctor. Oh, so please feel free to call. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. <laughs> so if you want some more information about what VEX is, I know it's uh, something that is pretty massive uh, within the States and they also do international competitions. So if you're like, I have no idea what VEX is, this is, I think, a nice spot to actually see. And they have things for, you know, high school, middle school and elementary. And once again, you have the link. There's a lot of information here but get familiar with, you know, what is it that interests you and intrigues you? Maybe you're that type of teacher that loves, loves, loves doing research. That's CS. Maybe you're that type of teacher that loves robots and building. That is CS. Maybe you're that type of teacher that really likes Minecraft. That's CS. That's Scratch. So CS is not monolithic, but it has many avenues. Amazing. Thank you so much. I wish we had a lot more time, uh, but I wanted to make sure that Kathleen also um, had a chance to, to talk about the resources and the things that are happening with the STEM2 hub as well. Um, and then we'll have a lot of time afterwards to share resources um, asynchronously as well. So let me share that. Yes, so I have given you um, my email address there and our website address if you're interested in signing up for our newsletter. And while we are the Northeast STEM2 Hub, we do a lot of work across the state. So Maya, if you'd like to go ahead and flip that. Mm -hmm. um, Code.org, we really heard a lot about Code.org today. Just be on the lookout. Computer Science A, AP Computer Science A, is coming soon as a new offering that'll be supported by Code.org. As they mentioned, we have five Code.org regional partners here in Florida. Broward being one, STEM Hub being one, and there's three others. You can reach out to any one of us and we can put you in touch with your regional partner and you could go ahead and flip. And again, starting with elementary, start with an hour of code, follow that pathway, and then you have a good solid curriculum and starting point. And again, 
workshops are available for that. Now, Lego Education has a wonderful way, and um, Rebecca had talked some about how the robotics fits in. They've actually got a continuum that will take you right from block coding up into, into Scratch, into Python, into typing scripts. So that progression is wonderful with a focus on computational thinking. But then I also like to go ahead and think about why and why is those careers? We know that the high demand, high wage careers are out there and every child is not getting access. So we have a partnership with WAS Education and you can see those amazing pathways to the careers that start early, that start in kindergarten and start getting kids to identify as being part of, I am a cybersecurity person, I am a mobile app developer. So we get kids to understand and start to learn those basic skills. And you could flip. How are you gonna learn all of this? Well, I've got really good news. We do professional learning. And in fact, over the summer with Broward County Public Schools, we co-hosted a statewide virtual computer science fest where you were able to learn these pathways, learn to 3D print, have experiences with Lego. And we are going to be bringing in um, some new partners and announcing some new training, Minecraft. We're talking with Coder Z. We'll have another computer science festival this year. But in that star, this is really important. You may be thinking, where am I gonna get money to get to this training? How am I gonna find out? Well, there are, thanks to our governor's support of computer science, he has a $10 million line item for professional learning for computer science. So we have the world's best faculty of computer science teachers. Talk to your districts because your districts are now working on taking that money that's allocated to the district. So there are funds for you to engage in this wonderful professional learning, which is really good news. And if you sign up for our website or get in touch with your regional partner for code.org, we can get you in Lego training, WAS training, code training, any kind of computer science training that interests you. Great. Kathleen, thank you so much for sharing that. What you're noticing across the state is that there are a lot of resources and there are a lot, there's a lot of expertise. I was just gonna share, and you'll have access to this PowerPoint here um, at UF. There are resources. We have a certificate program. We have an online EDD program that's starting off and a master's, but we also have um, the lab that I run. And for those of you who know me, the work I do is around students with disabilities and kids who struggle in K-8 computer science. So my information is here as well. Um, and so there's not a lot of time to talk about it here, but we just thought we'd put a lot of these <laughs> links up and let you um, look at them. The additional resources are linked in the spreadsheet here. And then you also, if you could click on the very first page, you'll see that there is the, um, the what is it? Um, kind of the, the Google form that has a, a place for you to put your name and your email address and where you're from. And so we're kind of looking at this at the, as the very beginning of a conversation. Um, we will certainly share everything that we get from CS's elementary with you. And then I thought we would just um, have the group um, get together virtually, we'll have our listserv. And so um, I know that there are a lot of um, links in the chat. I've not been able to look at those. I don't know if I'll be able to sh um, save those. I might be able to, but if you can email me or Kathleen with those or put those in the spreadsheet um, yourselves, that would be really helpful. And um, to be respectful of your time, um, we're just like thrilled that you're here. Uh, we would love to learn more about what you're doing and we will share it across the state. Um, and with that, I know that we, that's pretty much all the time we have. So we're just okay. grateful to you and we're excited to start the conversation. Yes, thank you also care for caring so much about bringing computer science to your students. All right, have a wonderful rest of the day, everybody, and we'll be in touch with you. <laughs>